Imagine winning the NCAA championship, winning four challenger titles, playing Novak Djokovic on center court of Wimbledon, and breaking into the top 100 for the first time all within six months. Jacob Fernley just did it, and in this episode, he tells us all about it. All right, Jake, let's go back to 2020 when we first met. The whole world had stopped during COVID and we were in Fort Worth basically training all week and then we just mess around on weekends and have some fun on the weekends. And if we remember correctly, you were having some concerns about whether you'd be in the, the TCU lineup. Fast forward now four years, you graduated TCU um, with a national championship. You've had one of the quickest rises to the top 100 with four challenger titles. And you've also had some success at your home slam at Wimbledon and playing Djokovic on center court. So can you, I guess, give us a little bit of insight into how you go from, you know, I guess, freshman or sophomore year at TCU, not sure if you're going to be in the lineup to now? Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. Uh, I think uh, that was definitely a, a rough kind of patch uh, tennis wise. I think... Uh, yeah, like you mentioned, the the weekends, kind of the the beer die, all that stuff was great fun. But I think in terms of in terms of uh, in in terms of tennis, I think yeah, I was definitely struggling, um, struggling with a few injuries. Um, I mean, you guys both played uh, college tennis, you know, it's it's tough to kind of stay healthy. It's a lot of tennis, a lot of matches, and that I was yeah struggling a lot with that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I honestly I didn't feel like I was good enough to be playing in the lineup, and I think. I went in the lineup uh, that year playing six uh, and I felt very lucky to be playing six, to be honest. And um, yeah, I think um, I kind of knew that I needed to kind of do something different. And uh, one summer uh, I kind of made a conscious decision. I played a, a grass grass court event in uh, Cromer in England and <laughs> I lost second round to like a, like a guy who's just like really not that not that great, and uh, I called Devin, I called my dad, and I was like, I need to, I need to get out of here. Like I'm I'm going I'm going nowhere. I'm really not playing very good tennis at all. Uh, and then yeah, decided to go back to TCU and spend the summer. And I, I worked every day with with Devin, and I think from then on, I kind of made a conscious decision to to focus more on my tennis, and that was kind of. Uh, kind of what kind of changed for me and I think um I've kind of tried to keep that going for the last couple of years and on to uh playing on the pro tour yeah this man is uh extremely loyal to the frogs you know a lot of respect <laughs> to the frogs <laughs> thanks to the frogs. <laughs> yeah for sure I mean I owe a lot to, to the frogs and it was a great great time and uh I spent five years there which was probably longer than I expected but I think I was actually very one of the i think covid was a tough time for everyone but i actually think for me having an extra an extra year was was very valuable for me and i think it actually helped my progression more uh to have that fifth year which was which was very important a lot of point sorry go on sorry, go ahead. at what point did you start to feel a bit more confident about your game like how long did it take from the doubts and not playing well until you started to feel like okay i'm on i'm on the right track here I actually think like I played uh, I played the Battle in the Bay Classic uh, college tournament and I ended up winning that kind of a little bit out of nowhere. I mean, I didn't really expect to win it. And I think from then I, I started playing uh, playing a bit better and thinking like, yeah, I definitely and just kind of focusing more on my tennis. And I think that was something that was was key for me. And then going into the season, I ended up playing one and I actually lost a lot of matches. But I think just playing at that higher level uh, compared to previous previous years, kind of set me up, uh, like I said, for my fifth year and to to play just a higher level. Because I mean, uh, I think when you lose, you learn, and I think that's the biggest kind of thing that I've taken is the learning from those losses. And I, I lost a lot uh, that that senior year playing number one, so that was definitely valuable for me. If you don't mind me asking, where were you focused on before? Like, where was your focus if you weren't on the tennis? When you were not doing so well, uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was on. A, <laughs> so I, um, it was, uh, it was. Um, so yeah, college. I mean, it's obviously it's. There's a lot of distractions that that 
that take place there. You've got school, you've got, I was uh, luckily enough to have uh, Luke Fomba as a teammate who mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know, he he likes to, likes to party, likes to have fun. And uh, that was kind of, I, I, um, I always wanted to join in with him and the rest of my teammates. And those guys were definitely uh, living the, living the college dream. So, and I, I wanted to be a part of that as well. And I think, is that I where the that that a play came from? That that a play? Yeah, that... it a play. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the, <laughs> I think like look, looking back, I think I overused that a little bit. I uh-huh. think I was say, I was saying it every single yeah. time. Yeah, yeah um, so I, I can I think at the time I wasn't in the best frame of mind, but I can mm-hmm. imagine that it would it was getting a little bit annoying. But <laughs> it's <was> definitely <laughs> good, definitely good times. Um, but no, I think I think. Um, yeah, like everything, it's just finding a balance. And I think that was something that my first few years I didn't do great at was just finding a balance. I mean, I needed to prioritize sleep maybe more than I did, nutrition, like all that stuff outside of the tennis court. It plays it plays a huge part. And I think uh, it took me a little bit of time to find that find that balance um, in college. Okay. The goals and, uh, that you set in that time, were they more, let's say action oriented like a process goals or were you also setting like achievement goals in terms of like rankings in college rankings on the tour matches won yeah i don't i don't tend to set ranking goals necessarily i think they're i don't like them <laughs> that shit because, working yeah <laughs> don't to set goals yeah. you win every match you play I mean, my goal is to never lose <laughs> yeah it's easy it's easy to say now but and it's it's obviously it's something that is definitely difficult to not do but i think especially when I, when I was starting out, I think chasing ranking goals, it just adds that extra bit of pressure that I just felt like I didn't need. Um, I mean, coming out of college and I honestly think that's why I've been able to do well is because I didn't have that. I didn't put that pressure on myself. I feel if you go out and you're just saying, yeah, I have to reach this goal by February or by August, then if you don't reach that goal, but you miss it by two spots, then it's deemed as a failure when realistically it's not. So if my goal was to be top 100 by December and I was 130, then in my head, I perceive that year as a failure when in reality it's anything but a failure, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of why I, I tend not to set uh, the ranking goals. I, I I mean, I work, I set goals for for my shots. I mean, I always try and improve my shots as, as do all tennis players. And I think that's kind of where I set most of my goals is just to improve like say, say I want two months, I'm going to work on my serve and I'm going to improve this aspect of my serve. Um, and that's kind of where I tend to set to tend, tend to set more goals. Okay. So you feel like coming out of TCU, I guess we'll go about TCU in a little bit, but coming out of TCU and playing these first mm-hmm. few months, would you um, say that this is what helped you to improve the most and, and get the results is that you didn't set goals and you just kind of focused on what parts of the game you can improve? Because I mean, uh, Justin, we were doing some research earlier and Justin hinted towards, you know, last year, people don't realize the success you had last year in the futures and that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, yeah, like you won, you won edge Boston and you, I don't think you lost more than three games in a set. So I feel like, uh, <laughs> yeah. no, from qualities, the guy didn't have a set that was six, yeah. four. It was all like three, yeah. one, three, two. Um, yeah. so it's clear that this, I guess, level of tennis has been, building for a while like people just see what's happened in the last six months but mm-hmm. you've definitely been building for a long time um yeah i think uh i remember like i played last summer i played a lot of doubles uh, on the grass like and that was that was awesome and i had a little bit of a back injury and i took kind of three months uh three months off after and i didn't play any tournaments and i was taking the fall off from tcu and i think um having those periods of times where, where I can work on my game. I think that was, that was huge. And I think I'd be lying if I said that I thought that I was going to play kind of as well as I did at edge Baston and that, and I think everyone else was surprised as well. Like, like you said, with just the, the, like the kind of the fashion that it happened. I mean, I, I was shocked uh, myself. Um, but then, no, I think kind of, once I got that first win, then it kind of it gave me more confidence that I could win another one. And then I went to edge, I went to Luxembourg at the start of the year, and then I ended up going through qualities again. And then also had a had another very good week. And 
I think one thing that, that I've noticed in the, the tournaments I've done well is that there's always there's always one or two matches where you just feel like you've you've just you've scraped through that match. You know, you're very lucky to win that match. And I think after those matches, I, I ended up relaxing like hugely and then ended the up playing way. actually my best my best tennis. I mean, if I don't know if you've looked at many of my tournaments, but in Nottingham Challenger first round qualities, I won six in the third playing very ugly tennis. And then after that match, you you kind of relax and then end up playing some of the best tennis that I've that I've played. And then it's the same in uh in Lincoln. I lost the first set 6-0 against Boo, playing terrible, and then end up finding finding ways to win. And that kind of just sets you up for the week. And I think that's that's something that I've noticed and I actually like look forward to in in tournaments is having those moments where you're you almost think that you're you're down and out and then you're not and then it's it's a great feeling kind of on the on the other end. Flight's already booked in your head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like flight's already booked, like, hey Juan, get the sky scanner, you know? And then yeah. all of a sudden you you st you're still in the tournament. You just kind of mm. feel feel grateful to still be be in the tournament. Yeah. What's the mindset like in those matches when you're you're struggling, not playing great, it's early in the tournament? Um I mean, I I don't really know to be honest. I mean, I think I've been in a lot of matches now that I know that I can kind of work my way back. And I and it's it's never easy if you get to the position where you're five, four down serving. I know that it's never an easy kind of thing to to serve out a match. Um so I I mean I just try and stay positive and try and put put as many balls in the court as, as I can. And um, yeah, there's been many matches where I've been on the the end where I'm serving for a match and I know how difficult it is to do. Um, so I know it's going to be the same for the opponent. And I just I just try and um, kind of stay in the moment, uh, stay present is a, is a big thing. And um, yeah, that's kind of all I do. There's no there's no real secret. It kind of just... <laughs> I just try. You don't have I don't the know, secret try formula try for us to try and replicate. Yeah, I wish. I wish there was a, there was a secret, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just kind of stay competing, stay fighting, and good things will happen. So we have this uh, segment called over and under. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. give you some topics I think, and you're gonna tell me if you think they're over or underrated. Okay. So the first one, going off what you just said, would be superstitions and routines. Are they over or underrated in your opinion? Um. Underrated, underrated. So, what are what are your routines like at to at tournaments? Sounds like before um, you have no routines. It strikes me as a as a kind of guy like you yeah. found some routines and found some success. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I definitely, I definitely was a guy that that rushed a lot. I like to play kind of fast. I think if you if you kind of watch me play, I I like to go fast between points, and I think that it can be good if you're on a roll. It can be great, but I think. For me, anyway, I, right now I'm I'm relying on on doing a lot of breathing, doing a lot of kind of stuff like that, taking my time, going to the towel, bouncing the ball, um, focusing on your on your opponent. I think I think uh, there was a there was a good thing that a good kind of um, interview that Novak Djokovic did. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that one where he was saying about looking at your opponent yeah, and yeah. like looking at the surroundings. And that's something that actually is is I think very underrated. And I think it only really got like shown the light when Novak kind of said it. And it's actually something that's I think is extremely valuable. Um, but yeah, no, I think um having routines, taking your time, having always something that you feel like is comfortable for you in uncomfortable moments. Mm -hmm. So if you if you know that you can have um you you can take a deep breath or take five bounces of the ball and that's going to reset your mind or reset your body and then just start at the next point i think it's extremely valuable hey what's up guys sorry for interrupting the episode it would mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to the channel that's the best way to support us and help us to continue to make fun episodes with cool guests thanks so much and enjoy the rest of the episode and what about off court because this guy jody just uh, found the uh, journaling and he won't shut up about journaling. He's always journaling now. And what I think the he, fuck it's are making you talking him, about? It's making him so much journaling. better as a player. Bro, so any, I don't call him. Journal, journaling. Like, uh, oh, writing, journaling. Yeah, journaling. Yeah, writing. Bro, <laughs> he's an who, adrenaline. Who, what's yeah. this guy talking about? Like, if I'm out here screaming, hey, guys, I journal. No, that's not <laughs> what happens, bro. <laughs> Five minute journal every day. Talk to me about it. You're making, me sound I, like, you're making me sound like how the jokes about the vegans, you know, like a nah, vegan kind of stuff. I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing. Because I remember 
we used to play against TCU sometimes and they were probably the first team I saw like openly meditating. Like they would mm-hmm. get to the courts and then they were all yeah. whatever spread out and some guys closed their eyes, some guys laid down, whatever. But they were yeah. as a team, they were breathing and and let's let's say yeah, just meditating, getting their minds right. So I was curious yeah. if there's anything off the court, any actions or habits that you've added to your life that sort of help you on and off the court in the yeah, last I mean, few think, years. Yeah, I mean, Devin kind of opened my eyes to that a little bit. And I think it's something that I definitely took for granted during my during my college career because like we would always do visualization before mm-hmm. before matches. And uh even the night before matches, we would do kind of some sort of meditation just to kind of, I don't know, prepare our, our minds. Because I mean, tennis is is very physical, but it's also extremely mental. As we as we all know, it's it's tough. It's a it's an extremely tough sport on the mind. Um, so I think that is something that's huge. Um, kind of doing that meditation, that visualization. Because then anything that kind of happens on the court, you've kind of already worked through in your mind. So there's no mm-hmm. surprises. And I also think, I mean, if if you are journaling. Uh, thing i think to the end of weeks you write you write some points that you think you did well you think you did bad or you think that you could improve on i think it's also extremely extremely valuable and it's something that i've been doing uh just to kind of set myself up for the next week and then you learn from it and you move on i think it's extremely important good and what kind of guy are you like if you play if you play let's say at 3 p.m like how would you set your day up mm-hmm. leading leading into a match? It's tough. I, I I'm a fir- I love to be first on. I don't know. Okay. If there's many. I don't know if you guys what you guys are, but I, I love to be first or second on. Yeah, like first um, or second. But I, it's yeah, first or second is great. I mean, it's tough yeah. to sometimes wake up early, but mm-hmm. a lot of these tournaments, like <laughs> like and the ones done, in you know? France. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's done, I and mean, you can chill, and then you're watching like your opponents still yeah. battling. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a great feeling. Um, but I mean, some of these tournaments, like some of the tournaments I played in France, like they were starting matches at two, and I was like fifth on after two. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I'm playing. I played Robin Bertrand. I finished at one thirty a.m. So I mean, I, I mean, I didn't even know what to. I've never kind of been in that situation before. Um, so I can't remember what I did. Uh, yeah, I mean, I probably woke up like ten, maybe. Yeah. I mean, if I can't, but I mean, it's tough, skipping you know. Breakfast. Like you wake up, yeah, yeah. Skipping. I mean, I had brunch that day probably, and then <laughs> you have uh, lunch, and then I probably hit around two, and then I'll hit again around like seven. And then just take a bunch of Jeez. naps, and it's is yeah, it's brutal. And then longest days ever. I also, yeah, crazy long days. And then the next day, you you feel like it's it's crazy short because you you get once you've done your stretching, you've done all that stuff, you finish. Uh, you wake up at like eleven thirty, and then all of a sudden days. And then the next day, I was first on, like the day after that Oof. day off. So it's yeah, it, it it's tough, but um. No, I like have it. Seen, it's, it keeps it interesting. Have you watched the the Netflix thing with um the basketball? Was it starting five? five? Have you seen that yet or no? I actually did. Yeah, I I did just you started see, that when I was in did Basel. You see Le, did you see LeBron's uh routine on like what he does in a day? Yeah, it's that crazy. that's like, crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's actually crazy. <laughs> if he has to play at seven p.m., yeah, he's waking up. What time is that he wake up? Like six thirty. He's yeah, he taking he like was... ice bath before, and he has a shoot around before morning practice yeah. he has a two-hour I'm, nap then he has a like another workout then he has massages like it's ridiculous and then activation and then yeah, he goes activation. Yeah. <laughs> like pre pre activation you know? my yeah. god three activation yeah, guys, I mean, i'm cramping i'm cramping yeah. <laughs> activation. I mean, i'm done by 12 but i think if maybe if i was how was he 39 yeah i mean 39 competing at the level he's competing at maybe that's like what he feels he needs, but yeah. I can't imagine that's like sustainable for a lot of people. I mean, it can be. That's yeah, yeah, I mean, that's insane. Yeah, exhausting. I mean, by the time I mean you're 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 in the what do you say he was on the court at eight thirty or in the gym at eight thirty? He was at the he was at the court putting up shots before the morning shoot around, 
And then he said right. before the afternoon shoot around, he was also just him and the cheerleaders on the courts too. Like, but, what if, <laughs> but what if he's yeah. just lying though? What if he's just trolling for the for the Netflix yeah, camera? That's, that's just, that's I feel like he's not <laughs> lying. <laughs> There's videos of him doing it, bro. It's just yeah. like, I'm just playing, dog. Yeah, it's yeah, so funny. <laughs> All right, um, I got one bro. more for you. All right, all right go on. Yeah. Um, being tactical as a tennis player, is it over or underrated? And I ask it, it's kind of a weird question, but I ask it because when I was playing at my, my UTR the other week, and I, I've been injured a lot, so I'm trying to get matches. Yeah, for sure. And starting to win matches, I found myself playing a lot of the same kinds of points, kind of regardless of the opponent. So I was kind of, yeah. I liked my form from the out court, a lot of times yeah. inside out. And like a push, push, push the opponent's backhand side getting in, I kind of like that. So those patterns, I started yeah. to find myself playing over and over again. And I felt yeah. like even if the guy's backhand might be better, this kind of suits me more and I feel comfortable doing it under pressure. So I was yeah. kind of asking you if you think being tactical is more important than, let's say, playing your patterns. Yeah, I, th- I kind of agree with you, to be honest. I think that, like, first, first of all, I would always look within myself. Like, maybe I'll have like a, something that maybe my coach says like hey his backhand's a little bit weaker but i feel like it's better to play to play your patterns i mean you don't want to be reacting to everything that your opponent does so i think it's probably a little bit overrated i think yeah. but it's important it's important to have little like things but you don't want to i feel like for me anyway it's bad to like go full in depth about my opponent saying oh he doesn't like his backhand like outside mm-hmm. the tram line or the sideline you know because then you start overthinking and feel like you have to play forcing it there you have to force it you know so i think first you you want to play your game and then maybe in tight points yeah you certain just stick moments, to you, yeah. yeah certain moments you you try and exploit certain things but i think first you have to play your game i mean you've been playing your game for so long mm-hmm. like i'm not gonna start like hitting topspin backhands you know i mean i i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's like it, so that that that's why uh, i think it's a bit overrated yeah i agree true yeah. all right yo let's um so let's talk a little bit about i guess the your exposure so i find it pretty funny that the, i feel like there's different levels to like tennis fans you know so the the college tennis fans would be familiar with who you are like you mm-hmm. i think you won was it i think austin you won um while you were in school or you made finals of austin at least you were doing well in futures like the cha- the the future in at oh University that was my my freshman year i think yeah so like while you were in yeah. school you were already doing well in futures but then mm-hmm. you know because we asked um instagram today we asked people to send in questions and mm-hmm. one of the questions hinted that the djokovic match um you know, it did a lot for your exposure in terms of like people knowing who you are, you know, but mm-hmm. we hinted to one in college, you were doing well in college. Then last year you won futures, like what Justin talked about. And this year mm-hmm. before even Wimbledon started, you were already starting to put on runs in the, the grass court challenges. So how much did that Djokovic match change for you in terms of, I guess, like, your exposure to the rest of the world and the rest of the tennis community because do some endorsements, anything. Like, obviously, you're playing on yeah. center court Wimbledon against the, in my opinion, the best tennis player of all yeah, time. So, yeah, for sure. So how much did that change for you? Um, yeah, I think that I, I agree with what you're saying. Maybe there was like during the grass season, there was maybe some slight increase in exposure after maybe Nottingham, but really nothing that drastic but then obviously after the the match against Djokovic I I didn't really like I kind of switched off Instagram uh, I got my my friend Luke Swan to kind of to deal with the Instagram because it was kind of it was a lot because I think I jumped maybe four or five thousand followers maybe four and a half thousand followers after that match and um there was obviously just a lot of kind of messages flying in like different things I was getting tagged in and it was just, it was a lot it was pretty it was pretty overwhelming kind of just because it's you go from having not a lot of exposure to Eurosport and BBC Sport like talking about you and saying your name so I definitely think that the Djokovic match was probably the what kind of started like or what gave me the biggest amount of exposure for sure because yeah I mean center court Wimbledon playing Djokovic and then I think 
winning a set was was huge. I think even if I had lost in three sets, I don't think it would have been as much exposure. But I think the fact that I was able to get a set, um, no matter what kind of physical condition Novak in it, is in, he's still it's, it's still Novak, the name. Man. It's still the same <laughs> Novak Djokovic. You know, you still see that his name. So um, yeah, so I think that was kind of a, a big um, big aspect of it for sure. What's about What's, in the locker yeah. room? Did oh, that yeah. change anything in the locker room? Meaning like, um, I guess your name, seeing your name in the draw, if someone's seeing your name in the draw or, or like the, the opinion of you in the locker room, do you think that changed like from the Djokovic match or you feel like it was already building from before? I I don't really think so, to be honest. It's actually, it's actually funny. I think a lot of the players, it's kind of, it's kind of tough. I think a lot of the players think that British people just peak on grass. Like I think that they they think that sometimes they the British people, especially like say me for for example, I, I came in the grass season around five hundred, and then obviously I have a good grass season, and they think ah okay like maybe he's it's just grass. <laughs> it's just grass, you know. So I I don't think necessarily that I kind of got any more respect really i think there was a lot of people that were like well that was, that was a good match or like great job but i don't i don't think people like necessarily feared me if they saw me in a in a draw unless maybe it was on grass i don't know okay. if i played if the whole year was on grass then maybe i would maybe there would be some more people that would when you start clapping would, everybody the indoor france challenges they show a little bit more respect now huh? yeah yeah that was probably <laughs> more when they started started showing some a, little, a few signs there uh, for sure yo what's the vibe like before you enter the stadium with Novak, like how what's the setup? Like are you guys just sitting in there waiting before they get to the court? Like you stand next to each other? Like what's the the scenario? Uh, it's, it was tough. It, I was so scared. <laughs> so he's like <laughs> that's the old that's the old friendly coming all, back. It's all it's all coming back to me. I, I like his like I don't want to sound like weird, but he's got like so much aura about him. Oh, like yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. kind of feel him. Like I didn't, I didn't know where he was before the match. Like the guy was way, I was warming up, like, like taking some breath. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, and then you have like the guy, he's ready to say, Hey, we're going to, we're going to go. And then he's already telling me that like, we're on Novak's time. Like we're going no when way. Djokovic. Yeah, yeah. Like he's, he told me like, we're going to wait for him. That's what he said. Like we will wait for him. And I'm thinking like, Center court uh, Wimbledon. There has to be some kind of timing we're following here. You know, there has to be like <laughs> some kind of thing. And then I walk out and I'm standing at like the gym. You kind of go down and you walk up the stairs and then you walk through and down the members bit. And I'm like standing in maze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally a maze. Yeah. <laughs> Get lost in that place. And then I'm standing at the top and then I like the doors below open and then Novak's there and like he sees me waiting at the top. And then he's kind of, he's still doing his stuff, like his bands, like his, and it, it, I think it is all a, it's all a, cause I mean, he knows that I'm super nervous and mm. he's making me stand there. Like I've kind of started to cool down a little bit. Adrenaline's kind of rising and he's at the bottom, like bouncing about, like with his team, like doing exercises. And then when he wanted to go, like, obviously he wasn't taking the piss. Like he was still kind of, within kind of five minutes of when we we're supposed to go on but it's definitely a, a tactic like making me wait and then it's like how they did the rafa thing and the break exactly and oh jumping my yeah, yeah i think it's Yo, definitely made me yeah. scared and i was just watching on tv yeah no, definitely, he hears definitely, the background music in real life he hears the music around him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you feel like such a small like child you know like uh-huh. when he's doing all that stuff i don't think it's as bad as rafa for sure but then like when I'm walking, like I'm walking first and like he's walking behind me and you just, I don't know, you just feel it. And it just feels like bigger. And then actually like when I walked on court, like I actually settled down a little bit because honestly I felt like, all right, there's no getting out of it now. You know, like that was kind of where my, where my mind was at because I was That's so crazy. nervous the night before I didn't sleep. Like I was, cause I just didn't want to get smoked. And in my head I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> like what like what what is it that like I haven't experienced yet in my tennis life that's going to be so different that's won him 24 grand slams like I was thinking mm. like what am I going to experience out there and but he he makes you play you know he lets you play which is good like he gives you he gives you some rhythm he's just better at it than everyone else like he yeah. makes the court feel like this small and 
he's just obviously I think I got him on a, I got him on a windy day which was good for me like he's never been like he does you know that you know that thing in Shanghai when he's going hey! you know that yeah, yeah. yeah he was doing some of that because like the ball's moving and um but no I mean he's he's incredible I mean the way he moves the, his timing is ridiculous yeah. do you find so, yourself distracted like watching him while playing him oh and and when when did chill, that go chill away out. chill out dog <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's a serious question, bro. I mean, first first game, like I played like a, a like on four fifteen four. I played a good point, and I I go like back and cross, and then he just steps in, laces one line, and then I'm thinking, all right, it's gonna be a long, it's gonna be a long day for me, or like oh, a quick or a quick yeah. day, yeah. <laughs> long day, quick day, and then first game on my serve, I like he, I hit two second serves. Because second serve is probably the shot that I get most nervous with, like hitting double faults. Like, um, so once I made my first two serves and he like ballooned some returns, I was like, okay, like if once again my first game, I can kind of relax a little bit. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's funny, like I hit, uh, I like tried to unload on two forehands. And he just kind of stood there and just like timed it like harder back at me. And I, I just looked, I looked up at like, and I just started smiling. I mean, it's like <laughs> I put everything I could into those forehands and he just kind of stood there as if it was nothing, you know, like it was, Crazy. I mean, you know how, yeah. you know how you described um, that he kind of lets you play a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Kovacevic, we had him on last year in Champagne and he played him. Yeah. I think it was last year at the French he played him. And he was saying the same thing. I saw that he was, one, yeah. He was saying that you like, you can kind of play against him, but he'll just mm -hmm. move you around the court. And then you kind of feel like he has a winner, but he doesn't go for it. And he'll continue yeah. to build the point a little bit more. And then when he ends the point, it's like he's in a winner to the middle of the court where you're like, you're off the court and then he has a win in a safe location. And I don't know, maybe yeah. maybe grass is not exactly the same as, as the clay, yeah. but would you have felt the same thing on, on the grass? I definitely, I definitely felt the same thing. I think it's like, especially at the start of the match, like you're in rallies with him, and then you're you're thinking like, wow, like I'm in rallies. Like I like he's gonna do something eventually. So you feel like you need to then overpress, and then that's kind of how he draws er like draws errors from you. Like he he makes the, like I said, he makes the court feel so small because he moves like a joke. And on grass, I mean that's. A huge thing is movement. I mean, a lot of guys don't really know how to move so well. And only he, the Brits. Only the, yeah, that's the argument they say. I mean, the Brits <laughs> just know how to move. Um, and then the, but he moves a joke. And but yeah, no, he lets you play. Like he just moves like bang, bang, bang. And then until you either miss or, like you said, there's there's a clear space for him to, to kind of, hit a winner or come into the net. But one one thing actually that he surprised me on was his first serve like his first serve percentage and his first serve spots were like it's not talked about ever like his ground strokes and his movement are talked about but i feel like his first serve is isn't talked about a lot and he hit like his first serve is is like a joke i mean like placement spots. placement yeah. pace like the way he he problem solves is a joke like if say for example I sit back on second serve return. He'll then just roll one short so that I'm like hitting it up like my shoot, like my feet. And then if I step in, he'll rock it like 115, like right in my body. And he he's doing that all the time. And then if say I'm chipping a return, next point he's wide S and V, like easy, easy put away. Or if and then I'm starting to, he's going wide, wide. I start cheat over, then bang, T, like straight away. Does he adjust that pretty quick? So like, quick, it, like this, it... like this. Yeah. So if he sees like, on one time, you're going to chip a forehand. The next one, he's yeah. going to right away. Like, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, I, I, like uh, Devin, Juan, like the people watching, they could see it more than me. But like they see like the, like the adjustments that he makes are, are constant. Like he's always looking for solutions. And that's kind of why it's like you feel like, okay, I've smoked a forehand return. I'm hitting my forehand a joke. And then he goes bang body. And then I'm like, you're like, damn, like, where'd that come from? You, you know, he's just going momentum. wide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can't really build momentum. He's just mixing it up. He's making it so difficult every time. I feel like, I feel like the serve of all things is the thing that you need to keep your opponent the most like uh, uncomfortable with, you know, like, for sure. You know, we, one of the questions we asked at the beginning was like, if you go into a match and you're thinking about playing your game versus your opponent's game, 
And I would mm-hmm. say of all things, probably serving is the one that you need to, obviously you have your favorite spots, you know, so you know in a big yeah. moment, if you want, I need to make a first serve or something, you can go for the higher percentage serve. But like, I think of all the areas of the game, probably serving is the one where you can like, just try your hardest to keep your opponents like guessing, like what you're saying in my opponent. In- uh, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, at the end of the day, the first serve is like, your serve is the thing that you can control the most. I mean, it's like hitting a golf shot. I mean, the ball's not moving. You just take your time, pick your spot. And I think that's kind of where your patterns and where your game can kind of come from. Like, I always feel if I'm serving good, I mean, I'm sure you guys are the same. Like, everything just feels easier, you know, on the yeah. court. Like, if you're hitting your spots and you're, then you you feel confident, like, throwing in a S and V, or you feel confident throwing like a kick serve wide and then looking for the forehand everything just kind of clicks better i, I feel you know what i find funny about the serve too is like because i'm indoors this week in uh, yeah. sioux falls and i feel like so i'm six four six five like i serve yeah. pretty big six but four I, bro i'm six four and three quarters at that height you don't need to round up yeah six, four, bro. it's still good it's so. good bro that's true over at six that's foot true. saying i'm six yeah. one on, online yeah, yeah yeah i mean i'll say i'm six one because no, i'll but, round up but i was saying like i feel like when i'm indoors now to me missing first serves is like it's really bad like meaning like i feel more pressure when i'm hitting second serves because guys can literally just they, there's no win there's no like most of the time it's relatively fast yeah. so like guys are just on a second serve faster like i feel more pressure on a second serve indoors than i do outdoors i don't know if you feel I the think same it, thing i think like when i've played kind of big big servers like tall guys like yourself like whenever i get like a second serve against like guys that you say who serve big like i'm like i feel to me that that's like my chance you know like, like I'm going to be like dummy locked in to to win that point. And I think that's probably like why you probably feel that is because they're like relieved that you've missed the first and yeah. they're they're like freaking locked in on yeah. making and they're going to be locked in. It's not like you can because next point, if you're playing a big server, like they could easily go ace, ace and then points done you know, and game's done. Um but yeah, no, I I completely agree. I mean, I feel I feel yeah. the same. It's like if you're giving second serves, I played uh, I played Greeks poor uh, in Stockholm, and he's got he's got a rocket. I mean, in Stockholm, those courts are fast, and like I would go, I would go maybe 30, 15 up, and I'd have like a forehand, and I'd maybe miss like close, and then that's almost like I feel is like game point. You know, that's almost yeah. break point. Is that that forehand? Because then thirty all he goes ace ace and then game's done like this and i think that's kind of where like those second serve opportunities come yeah. in like huge my At worst top nightmare, of the- oh, go ahead. my worst uh, nightmare is like on ad side missing a first serve yeah and like that feeling that you're talking about because most guys most right handers they hit their backhand pretty flat yeah so if i'm serving a volley and i hit i think now my kick serve out wide has to be fucking money otherwise yeah it's gonna take it high and just like flatten it yeah, across feet, and now yeah. it's at my toes and i'm volleying up net person yeah. is all the way across now you know right? <laughs> <laughs> literally my worst nightmare you know? yeah, i'm calling body one. poach all day long please yeah. body, just, help, just help go that way go that way yeah i was gonna 100%. ask because because you've played like basically year on year like futures and then this year like challengers and now you're starting to creep into the atps would you say that some of the biggest differences from, let's say, the levels would be maybe just like a little bit more class, maybe in serve and return as you go up, or is, or is it I, a bit of it's I, all around? I think I think so. I think like the matches that that I've played recently, like the match I played yesterday, the guy I played, I got off to a slow start. I got broken my first service game, and like he's not a big guy, but he served twenty aces in the match. Like he's serving. Oh, my, right? Aldmar, yeah, like he's yeah. he's got like from the back, he's very solid. Um, but his serve was he was like he was all over me on the serve. I thought I had a decent serving day, and I play a very sloppy game on my first service game, and I didn't have any other looks for the rest Set's of the gone. set. Set's Crazy. gone. That's the way I kind of felt anyway. Like I was trying my best, but just their serve first punch is is extremely impressive, and I think 
also what I kind of mentioned earlier, I think is like, it's just the fine margins of it. Like the, the points that like I want to win are when I go 15 love up in the service game or like 30, 15 up in their service game. I feel like that's the big point. It's not necessarily the break points are the big ones. It's the points that to set up break points. They're huge. Those mini advantage, yeah. Those mini advantages are, are massive because you get 30 all on a, on a big server. I mean, they all serve really good on especially on indoor courts that's i mean it's it's almost 50 50 if they hit an ace mm -hmm. you know it's it's not that's that's kind of what i what i've noticed is just those clutch points and then against a guy like greek sport he plays very fast and very very aggressive player and i played a terrible tie break i maybe played four or five bad points and in the match and that's that's it enough, i mean yeah. he just that's Thanks. it yeah it's probably also an advantage to think that way because not everyone puts that much value on those points. Like, for example, yeah, in Mexico early this year, Zeke Clark was playing a friend of ours, Oscar Ahoyzen. I don't know if you know both of them, but um, mm -hmm. Zeke was going through a tough I know time. Zeke, yeah. Zeke was going through a tough time. He lost. And he was telling me that he's not playing the big points well. And I was like, bro, mm -hmm. I completely disagree. Like, every time mm -hmm. it got to Deuce and Add and stuff, you were playing like, like you were like strong and like bold and going for it and stuff. And mm -hmm. okay, if you're in, if you're serving and you're in every single deuce point in your serve, you're going to get broken every now and again. So that's kind of yeah. how it goes. But I told him that you weren't playing the 15 alls and 15 30s, 30 15s, like those points in the beginning of the game. If you play those points, the way you played the deuce and add points, yeah. you're going to have a, a better chance to hold. So like, I think I guys don't see those early points in a game as, as important. And then, they feel like the big points are not playing as well just because they lost a few but just because yeah. you lost them doesn't mean you weren't playing them the right way yeah like you you say you miss a forehand top of the net uh love 50, uh, like to go 30 level up in their service game and then you lose the game on like three advantages like yeah. you're going to focus on the advantages because those are the ones that you could have won to win the game but you put that forehand away at 30 love like it's yeah. a it could be a break like way easier and i think that's sure. kind of where like it's still difficult for me to kind of understand that kind of way of thinking but i've definitely i definitely looking back at my matches like i noticed it like there's those little points in those moments that like i need like i need to be more more on it because those are the those are the chances and then because everyone serves very good at, at all levels really but that's that's what i've noticed just playing these few kind of um atp matches against some of the best players Okay. We spoke about playing Novak at Wimbledon. What's the experience playing Benoit Paire in France? <laughs> <laughs> very, <laughs> very different. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I was super nervous for that match because I always get very like uneasy because I know that he's a bit, he's a bit everywhere. Like he could play like lights out, or he could play like he did. You know, so I I don't know what to expect. So I'm going in like okay, like I like we said earlier, I just need to focus on myself, and I go on to the to the court and it's it's packed. Like it's a uh, it's Tuesday, like it's kids' day, and it's a big stadium. It's like you can't see the crowd. It's like pitch black. The crowd and the court is just spotlight, and What's that they like? all is it have. Hard? Is it hard to play in that? Or you just for me, like pretty quick. for me, I actually quite like it sometimes. Like yeah. early on was big stadium, but like all lit, so you could see everyone. Okay. But Ren was like black, so you could barely mm -hmm. see unless you went up and like looked. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was it was crazy loud because I guess they all came to see Benoit like put in a good performance and try a hundred percent. That's what they were wanting. That's the opposite of what they got, and they. <laughs> Like first game, I I start, like I just hit to his backhand. He just goes like like this, you know, or something like like stupid, and um, I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I keep going, and then actually, the tactic was to go to the forehand. I think that's pretty obvious to everyone that the forehand's probably the weaker side. And then I didn't actually clock that he didn't hit any double-handed backhands until I'd won the first set. And then after the first set, I was, what? what yeah, I didn't even, I didn't like, I because I was going to his forehand the whole time because that was the weakness, and I didn't want to give him any backhands. But then I was looking, and he was just chipping every backhand, 
so then I was like, okay, just go to the backhand. And he was pretty much tanking. I mean, the crowd was trying to get him in it. And then first point of the second set, he hits like a silly slice drop shot winner. And I was like, it's unbelievable. And the crowd go crazy. And then he just fine, goes double shank <laughs> forehand crowd. <laughs> slice back and to the umpire's chair and then starts like kissing the crowd they start <laughs> booing and it was just it was a shambles and then it, it was over in like what was it 30 37, 37, 37 minutes. minutes yeah i mean it looks like i played a great match but i just put the ball in the court that was it i did was that was there no moment where you or was there a moment where you realized okay this is just gonna be that day's gonna be quick or do you ever feel like he might just start trying and it might just... That's the thing. Yeah. That's like when he hit that ridiculous backspin drop shot, I'm like, this could be... <laughs> like, he could start, like, serving volleying every point and just doing some crazy stuff because, I mean, he's so yeah. talented. Yeah. And then then after I got that break first game, like, I mean, yeah, I didn't have... I really didn't have to do anything. But it turns out he... I spoke to him at the end and he said that he just got an injection in his wrist. Um, Let's so just shake, shake was, hands then, bro. Let's just... Why yeah. don't we just or, call it? Or yeah, yeah. Doing? why did you make me? Yeah, or just don't play. I mean, I, yeah. it's tough because I mean, for me, yeah. if I say I'm playing a a challenger in Edinburgh, mm -hmm. and I like I'm playing in front of my my home fans, like I have kids screaming for me, literally. Like I won't want to play. I don't. I wouldn't want to like act like that necessarily in front of mm -hmm. in front of the home fans. But I mean, he obviously did it for a reason, and I mean, he's. I mean, he's done so so well in his career. I mean, he's had an unbelievable career, but I think he yeah, just got, player. yeah, unreal talented player. I think he just got caught on a on a bad day, but it was it was fun. I mean, it was cool to play him at least <laughs> while it yeah. while it lasted. I was in France at the same time, and I think he was either playing doubles with a friend of a friend or against or something. I I don't remember if it was the day of your match or the day before, but I heard his wrist was hurt. So then I saw the results yeah. and I was like, okay. Uh, I okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know until, yeah, like I said, after the first, um, that his wrist was hurt, but then he told me and I was like, yeah, I, I, I figured there's something, something was going on. Yeah. I mean, it's like you take away his backhand. I mean, that's a huge part of his, I mean, his backhand's yeah. ridiculous. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Tournaments um, in France look so nice. It's like, unreal. I saw, I saw Jody set up in the futures. It was looked like looked like a challenger, and then I see the Ren yeah. and Orleans and all these places, and they look like two fifties, five hundreds. Like I don't understand. Yeah, no, it's it's like it's a shame, really. I think Cracked Rackets may have made like a comment about it, like they okay. needed to up the level or like up the kind of exposure to American challengers because. I mean, the level that all these challenges are played at, I mean, it's extremely high. I mean, the tennis is a joke. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame that those tournaments don't have the same, or the people in America just don't have the same love for tennis that people in France do. I mean, they love it. And it also helps yeah. that France have like 40 people in the top 200. I mean, it's a joke. Yeah. Like they, the level that France produces is mm -hmm. insane. And But no, I mean, those those tournaments were were unreal. I mean, they're, they're like... Ren was like a theater that was made into a tennis court. I mean, there's so much that goes into it. I mean, is Ren the one with uh, where they were like the guy was walking on? He walked into the wall. You yeah, know what yeah, yeah. About? I don't know. That, you know, they, <laughs> they've, that. Named, that? they've named that wall after him now. It says that is name. hilarious. That is yeah. hilarious. We'll include, that, we'll include the video. We'll include the video in the episode yeah, so but that, we can see. That's why I was telling you it's sometimes tough when it's pitch black because they they do this crazy light show at the start and you're like like this <laughs> going on the court and then he just, he just turned the wrong way and went bang That's into the yeah. well, I saw that um, I saw they posted a video of it this year like they they did yeah. something like they did something on their social media about this I think it was a uh, Evan Furness I think Evan that Furness, was his name yeah. Thanks yeah I think he was the guy it's so funny he played it this year as well but he I don't think he uh he did. He made the same mistake. Uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so funny. Uh, yeah. All right, bro. So uh, what's it like? Uh, what's your camaraderie like with the other Brits? Like we've seen pictures of you going out with dinner with some of the other Brits and that sort of stuff on Instagram. So how, mm -hmm. is it, how do you get on with the with the Brits um, like on tour? Um, I mean, obviously, like I, I've known Draper for, for a long time. Um, but obviously we kind of went went separate separate paths for a while. I mean, he he was kind of he was always deemed to or he was always gonna do well. I mean, the guy's like unbelievable tennis player and he's 
what he's done has been exceptional. So I think we've only just started to kind of kind of get kind of somewhat close again. But I mean, he's a he's a great guy, and um, we've always we've always kind of kept in touch. Uh, so I get along very well with him, and he's also a very good person to have as like like a just if I have I need any questions about matches, the tour, whatever, because I mean he's obviously at that top end of the game now, which is is an extremely valuable kind of person to talk to, you know? I mean, if you want to get to that top level, I mean, he's he's kind of done it, you know? Um, and then obviously there's like this Paul Job, a uh, legend. I don't know if you guys know him, uh, but I mean, he's he's an unbelievable guy. Um, uh, and then <laughs> someone who I actually just got to know well was uh, Oliver Crawford. I mean, he just switched to, to the UK and he's, he's I don't know how well you got... Yeah, he <laughs> yeah, so yeah, gonna be he he gonna is, be more yeah, American is. from South Carolina or something like, like that, bro. Like <laughs> I'm in the I'm in the gym at NTC and I just hear this like voice just in the gym and he is so American, but sub no, dude. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, he's he's a great guy and I get mm -hmm. on well with him and yeah, there's it's it's a great group. I mean, we train, we all train at NTC, the, the National Center in London, and it is great vibes and it's it's really kind of um a great environment to improve uh, i think that's kind of what i've noticed and that i feel and obviously sorry can't forget pj pj as well um okay. jack um he's uh i heard he had an incident recently uh with he's like what, skateboarding what, or something he fell off he... oh yeah no you <laughs> you got like just tapped by a car on a bike uh, a line bike <laughs> Tap and a love tap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little, little like get out of the way, you know. And then, yeah, uh, yeah he he cut his shin, his uh, chin. But I think I think he's all right now. I saw. I play fantasy football, uh, fantasy Premier yeah. League, and I messaged a group chat and I said, "Jack, how's your face?" And he never. Answered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's still it's still a lot, a bit of shock. I think it was a bit scary for him at the time, which is okay. uh, understandable. But yeah, I'm glad that it, it could have been a lot worse. So yeah, buy a journal. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. It's good. It's good that you came came on the other end for sure. Yeah. But, um, Yo, yeah. How does it work with the LTA? Do they just they just assign you a coach, or do you when you come in, have you already known someone there that you like to work with? Mm. Well, they actually like they they. I think they have like like supervisors kind of, and they okay. kind of like there's one that kind of looks after the college boys like myself pj um toby samuel like those guys um so he kind of oversees our kind of progression but i mean i i have my my own coach like juan yeah yeah, yeah of course juan you guys know oh you with juan. juan martin yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay okay, yeah, okay he's, that's good. he's been my yeah he's been my coach since uh yeah i forgot you guys know him well yeah yeah we, um he, he's been my coach since uh since wimbledon actually so oh nice yeah, yeah i've been wor working with him and uh, so he's my coach, but then like the LTA kind of oversee everything. Um, okay. And I work with the, the SNC coaches there, Ollie and Ben, and they kind of work with all the the guys. Like I think Ollie works with uh, some of the guys and then Ben works with with some of the guys as well. So it's, it's a good setup. Like it's, it's all under kind of under wraps, you know, like if you mm -hmm. like you have to, they have to kind of necessarily approve of your coach and they, they always want to know kind of what you're doing just so they, they know that um, you're improving, which is, which I think okay. is good as well. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right, bro. So we asked Instagram some questions today. Well, we asked yeah. Instagram to send us some questions. Um, we'll get to a few of them. So the first one is from Zvat. He says, congrats on great success you have. My question is even to the best college players, it takes some time before they break through on a pro circuit. What do you think? What do you think you did to reach the top 100 that fast? Is it because you're mentally strong or you have some really strong shots or what do you see as the main reason? Um, uh, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I think um, <laughs> it's, it's a good question. I mean, it's, it's tough to answer with a, with a straight kind of answer. I mean, I obviously I think, I, I mean, I have some, obviously I don't have bad shots. I think I have, I have good shots and, um, Guys, I've won a lot right now. Yeah. <laughs> We've been seeing no, the 400 right. Instagram Everything every plays. day. Everything bro. plays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. Obviously, like I, like I mentioned earlier, I've played a lot of very close matches, um, and I've managed to come through those. I mean, I lose, I lose to Shidek first round qualies in Nottingham. Then, 
Like I'm not in it the position. It was Shadek who started the run. Yeah, yeah, he wow. was the first one and uh, first victim. And, yeah, yeah, respect to Shadek. So he, uh, <laughs> so it's like if if I lose that match, then like I probably wouldn't wouldn't be in the situation I'm in. So I think being mentally strong and finding ways to win matches has been a huge like a huge thing for for my success uh, so yeah. far because it's not yeah it's not easy to to come through some tough matches but like i said they open up tournaments and they open up weeks and um they allow you to kind of to kind of keep improving and keep winning winning tournaments or getting deep in tournaments i think that's that's something that i've learned a lot okay um next question is from brian he says are there any differences between the ball that Manorino hits and one struck by a bigger hitter, like a Greek sport or someone. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Manorino, it's it's interesting the way he plays. I mean, he, I don't know if you know the tension he uses, but I think it's like goofy Dangerous, low, dangerously low. Dangerously yeah, I think low, it's yeah. like too low. Um, <laughs> but I mean, he has like no take back, and everything's kind of here, and his backhand stays like this far off the ground. And that kind of took me a lot, a lot of time to kind of get used to. But it's not, it's not fast, but it comes, like, it like skids through because it's kind of coming with a little, it's like very flat, you know, like very flat mm -hmm. shots. Um, whereas like someone like Greek Spore, he hits the ball massive, but it's like, it's got revs on it. You know, it, it's a different, it is a different ball for sure. I mean, even playing, um, like O'Connell or even playing Almire. I mean, those balls are heavy. Like Basil courts were were bouncy, and those balls are coming in he like very heavy. And um, Manorino's was kind of on the opposite end. It's coming in fast, but like very low. Like you're picking up at your heels. Yeah. Yeah. Is it tough? Sorry, you said Stockholm was fast, and then Basil mm -hmm. you said was bouncy. Like tough for yeah. you to go week to week, different surfaces, different speeds. Um. Just, yeah, just I actually think it's actually, I think it's something that like. I don't know if many players have raised concerns about it, but like I played Mute first round uh, in Stockholm. We know he's a little bit nuts. And like all he was complaining about, all he was complaining about was the balls. Like the whole match, he was saying, ah, like kind of like one week this ball, next week. And I think it's something that's like, it's, it's strange to me. Like, I think the good thing about like that American swing, like the challengers, they pretty much use Wolves oh, in US, US Open, Open the whole time, which is unreal. Um, but like in first week in Ren, I was using Dunlop. In Orlean, I was using Head. And then in Stockholm, I'm using Soderling balls. Like, and then in back in Basel, I'm using on a different core and I'm using Dun a different Dun. I'm using Dunlop ATP and not Dunlop four. And I think that's something that is definitely like something to get used to. But I was quite lucky because. After Ren, Orlean, and Stockholm, I had like some weeks to prepare in between. Like I took weeks mm -hmm. off. Which kind of meant that I could get get used to the ball, but it is definitely something. Should, do you think they should um, try to keep the same ball? I think so. I mean, I think like say, I mean, I don't know. There was like eight challengers in a row in France. I mean, I understand that there's probably like some sponsor stuff, and which is way more complicated than I know. But if you can try and make those eight tournaments the same ball, because I mean, you usually go tournament to tournament. I mean, you're going to stay in France if you can. And I think it'd be good to kind of keep the balls the same like they yeah. do in America. I think it's yeah, I heard an interesting important. idea. I think it might have been on the serve podcast or somewhere where they said like they should just have like balls that have ATP tournaments and then the brands can just paint their name on it. Because all they want to do is get the signage out there so they could just have different yeah, signs on them, but the same ball. Probably yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good simplify idea. Simplify yeah. things, yeah. But then it, then it kind of gets tough because like say... Say Sinner likes Dunlop Forts and then Alcaraz hates Dunlop Forts. Like, how do you yeah. find like, or like, you know, <laughs> like right someone's, balls, yeah. Yeah, someone's, someone's gonna always going to be unhappy and someone's going to be unreal. And then it's going to be LeBron, like, LeBron and Anthony Edwards play with the same basketball. So I don't know, like, you know what I mean? It's true. <laughs> it, it is, is what it point. is. Right? I've actually never heard of that. But that's actually yeah. a good, it's a good, yeah. uh, it's a good point. I, I, I think it's less about, about like what ball people like and more about protecting the players and like protecting the sport. Because like, if it's less adjustment, then maybe it's easier for you. Like, let's say you go from one surface that's kind of fast to, to another one that's a little yeah. bit slower, but then you also have different balls. It, that's two different things you have to adjust to instead of just one. Like if you use the same balls for both sure. places and maybe it's better on the arm because serving yeah, doesn't really tough. So I was going to say, I started feeling my arm quite a lot, like changing, 
changing to like heavy balls. I mean, I yeah. I mean, you're yeah, 40 matches in 40 matches in in four weeks. I feel like you're gonna start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> before we hit record today, uh, everyone who's watching, before we hit record, we were talking. You know, just Jake was just catching up, and he was saying that he was looking at the list for for Australia, like you know, the Australia list, main draw and qualies cut and that sort of stuff, and. The reality is he's just run out of weeks to win. You know, like he doesn't have enough yeah. weeks he has available on the calendar yeah. to win. You know? Running so. out of time. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. All right, next question is um, from Kian. What Scottish football team do you support? Um, simple answer, I don't support one. But growing up, I supported Hibernian. Like, yeah, I had, I'm really from good. Edinburgh. Had to, had to get away yeah. from it. <laughs> <laughs> had to get away from it. It was, it was tough. Um, but no, I used to support, I used to go to like the shop at Hibernian. I'm from Edinburgh, so it was either Hibs or Hearts. And I just happened to live closer to Hibs. Um, so yeah, Hibs is, Hibs is the, I guess the choice, but I really, I, I haven't, I couldn't tell you where anyone in like in the Scottish league is. So yeah. Okay. Um, we have a last, last second one. There's so many that I, I that they didn't get in in time. But last one from Jonathan says, what's an underrated quality about British tennis players that the world may not fully appreciate with so many players emerging on the men's side like yourself, Jack, Cam, Billy, Job, Choinsky, Jay, and others. My God, there's so many good players. Roughly. It seems like there's something unique driving this new wave of talent. So what is it about the English players? There's grass. Uh, <laughs> So, grass, yeah, grass, 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 grass it's, the, it's the wild cards during grass season. That's it. That apply. <laughs> that apply. <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. To be fair, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's any anything specific. I mean, I think all those guys that you mentioned, I mean, they work very hard, and they're all very talented tennis players. I think that's that's the main thing. I mean, one plus one is two. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely no secret it's definitely formula. Not, it's definitely not rocket science. It's, yeah. they they work they work hard and they they they're very good tennis players. And obviously, they a lot of those guys train at NTC. They train in very good environments. They train in very good uh, against very good players. I mean, we all kind of train with each other. And I think that's as I mentioned, having a good base to train is extremely important. And I think that only drives success. And then you see. You see your peers doing well. That's motivation for you to do well. So I think when one person makes that jump, then it's natural that two more then start to make that jump, then two more start to make that jump. And I think that's kind of hopefully what we're seeing because, I mean, like I said earlier, like there's nations like Argentina, France, that literally half of the tour is French or half, like it's, it's a joke what those guys are doing. So hopefully the UK can... Because we definitely have the the resources for it. Like the NTC is unbelievable. Um, the only thing we're lacking is the weather. But um, other than that, it's it's uh, hopefully British tennis can can kind of keep going up. Exciting times. Yeah, yeah. Hope All so. right, Justin. Let's let's run a game before we get out of here. Yes, sir. So we play first to three correct answers here. You just right. shout the answer out. If you shout it out, you're wrong. Your opponent gets to. I guess rebut with another answer. So if you say it wrong, if I say it wrong, it goes to to Jody. It goes to Jody, yeah. Oh. And yeah. then you get we get, we give him two chances to get it right. If we get it both wrong, we're just gonna move on to the next question. Okay. First of three correct answers. Good. Yeah. Question number one: Who is the number two male from the United States right now, ranked in singles? Francis. No. Uh, Tommy. Tommy Paul, correct. <laughs> <laughs> bro jake the first like 10 times we played this game i lost by the way so you better win <laughs> no pressure then none okay <laughs> don't ask any math questions please <laughs> true or false sinner has a positive win-loss record against novak Djokovic. true false oh if i go math right now it's, it's don't ugly do it, don't do it don't do it don't do it it's <laughs> ugly it's done don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> i'm gonna have to do it okay I'm, I'm gonna give you another chance we're gonna go language wow, translate the scoreline deuce to french 
The guy just, just played, just played challenges in, that's in what France. I'm saying. The man just played a million. I yeah, just played three futures. I should know. What's Egalite? What is that? Is that an answer? Egalite? Egalite? 3 0. If only he's won again. Oh. The guy's on a winning streak. <laughs> <laughs> really on and, on and off the court. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, that's 3 0. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> I said that rings bells in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Jake. Thanks so much for coming, bro. We appreciate yeah, thank you guys for having me. That was unreal. Thank you. Thanks for doing this, bro. I yeah, know I've been luck, in, your, in your inbox a little asking every other day we're, we're going to be doing it. But Yo, yeah, that reminds me, actually. That reminds me. Two things. Two things. One, you remind me when you when you played Djokovic, I was one of the people that sent a, a message at that time on Instagram, but I knew. I was like, surely he's not getting back to me. Like, we haven't talked much over the years, so I knew for yeah. sure you're not answering. Like, you have a million messages. But the second time, motherfucker, I messaged you to play doubles. You're not going to send, hey, no, I'm not playing doubles next It might have been Luke. It might have been Luke. It wasn't <laughs> I, him. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I not, definitely didn't do that on purpose. This guy. Oh, okay. All it's right. in his I journal. It's, it's, it's in his journal. On page one of his journal. That's when he bought his journal. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in Jordy's like Hitler, hate yeah. now in his journal. No, no, I'm writing the journal. I'm saying I'm grateful for the opportunity to at least have him on Instagram so that he can leave me unseen. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, yeah, thanks I'm for sorry, doing no, this, bro. It's not bad. Yeah, no, thank no, you guys. It's all for good. This was great. Was awesome. Thanks so much. Thank Good you. luck for the rest of the season. Hopefully, we see you main draw in Aussie. Yeah, I hope so, guys. Yeah.